all of that, you know, a lot of a lot of words there that was. So um, to simplify it, I'm going to share my three or four actually four of my four favorite stress busting foods. And the avocado is giant, and I, I'm not sure why it's giant, but that doesn't mean I love avocado is not my favorite one out of these ones. Uh, I have no favorites. Um, they're all equal to me. So water first up. So this is actually quite interesting and uh, I think some of you might find this quite fascinating. So a really simple way is if you're feeling really overwhelmed and really stressed, it's just to have a glass of water because even very, very mild dehydration, dehydration that can increase your cortisol levels, which obviously, as we know, contributes to increased stress. So I'm not saying drinking water is going to make all of those stresses and what's going on in your life vanish, but it can help your body sort of handle stress a bit better. Sometimes something as simple as a glass of water can make a really big difference. So I think that's a really good tip to know because I think when we think of stress, we think we've got to go for all these really fancy foods, but sometimes a glass of water is all that we need. Um, so I'm going to touch on the avocados now because it's right there and it's huge. Um, so avocados are full of vitamin C, they've got B6 in there, they've got potassium, they've got fiber, and they've also got lots of uh, healthy fats and so monounsaturated fats. So they're a really good sort of stress fighting snack, I'd say. Um, and then on the bottom left, we have yogurt. So yogurt contains that good bacteria that I touched on before. And there is emerging evidence that shows that this, so lactobacillus and bifidobacteria, they can be really beneficial for our brain health. Um, what else we've got there? Is that green leafy vegetables? Yes, on the right hand side. I was trying to look what that one was. Um, so things like spinach and kale, they are sort of stress busting powerhouses. They are a rich source of magnesium, which we talked about earlier. And so that helps with regulation of cortisol, keeping our blood pressure levels in check. Um, green leafy veg also contains folate, which actually sort of plays a role in the production of a feel-good chemical in our brain, dopamine. So not only will it help to reduce stress, it will also help with dopamine production. So that's kind of a win-win there. Eat a rainbow, I would always say. So it's, it's sort of going back to that eating a healthy, balanced diet. Um, but eating lots of colourful fruits and vegetables is really important because I think we kind of get stuck in a rut. So if we go shopping or if we order food, we kind of go for the same things because it's familiar to us and we're used to it. And it's quite it's quite nice to have that sort of comfort, but it's actually really good for your gut health to try lots of different fruits and vegetables. It really helps to increase the diversity in the gut and that is really important for a healthy microbiome. So lots of different colors. So I think a really good way of doing this is just introducing a new vegetable or fruit, maybe even like once a month or once every couple of weeks and see how you feel. Um, it's quite nice as well to kind of experiment in the kitchen as well. So it can be a fun thing to do too. Start the day with a breakfast. So I think it's really important to say here that I know not everybody likes breakfast. Some people don't need to have breakfast and that's fine. Um, but I would say if you do have breakfast, try and make it as packed full of goodness as you can, because I think it's just a really good chance to get as many fruits and veggies in as possible, making sure you're getting a good source of protein, good source of fats, good source of carbohydrates, as much as you can, because then you know that you're set up for the day. You've had loads of the good stuff already. Um, and then you're kind of ready and you kind of, kind of feel like you can handle anything when you've had a really good breakfast, I find. Green tea, because green tea is kind of like, um, it's very popular at the moment. But although green tea contains caffeine, what it does contain is something called L-theanine. And L-theanine actually helps to calm us down. So I think green tea can actually be a really good option. Although it's got caffeine in it, it has that L-theanine to kind of help balance you out. Um, so yeah, green tea and a healthy breakfast is a good Way to start the day for sure. Uh, so protein, this is really, really important because when we're chronically stressed, the body has an increased demand for protein. And what protein does is it helps to slow the release of sugars into the bloodstream. Um, and so making sure you're getting good lean protein sources. So it's fish, eggs, beans, lentils, meat, nuts, whatever it might be for you, it's really important to keep your blood sugar levels balanced. So 
If our blood sugar levels aren't balanced, the body perceives that as a stressor. So imbalanced blood sugar levels can actually add to our stress as well. So the best way to do this is make sure you're having protein with every snack and every meal. This is something I say a lot. Um, it's sort of my go-to phrase, but I can't stress the importance of it because it really imbalanced pro um, blood sugar levels due to lack of protein is really detrimental to our health. So that's another takeaway that I hope people uh, take with them from today. Avoid high refined foods, yes. So these are, well, as you can see in the picture, sort of foods like cereals, very sugary cereals, um, biscuits, sweets, chocolates, white pasta, white bread, etc. They can spike our blood sugar levels. And like I said, if our blood sugar levels are going up and down all over the place, then that's when problems start to occur. So what you can do is you can replace those foods with unrefined options, so whole grain options. Um, and for example, if cereal is kind of your go-to, some cereals are okay, but there's so many that are packed with sugar. So starting your day with things like eggs, um, what else could you have? Rye bread and avocado, with some lemon juice, some salmon, whatever it might be for you. Find something that you enjoy as well. That's really important. Um, but just try making a couple of swaps here and there and see how it makes you feel. Because I know if I've had something like a biscuit or a slice of cake, I know that I will, I will instantly feel that sugar rush and I would feel great. And then I start feeling really lethargic, really sluggish, and it just doesn't make me feel good. So kind of tune into how you feel and see how you go. I actually, I, I use dates quite a lot, but I always make sure I have protein with them. Um, so I'll have dates with nut butter or dates with tahini. Um, but normally dates not butter. I don't really have a huge problem with dates. Um, obviously, lots of recipes, they call for like 25 dates, which is very excessive. Um, but yeah, I think a couple of dates, because again, I don't have too much problem with natural sugars. Um, our body kind of understands them. It's sort of the process with fine sugar that our body can't really handle and sort of gets a bit thrown by. Um, so yeah, I think dates are a good option. Um, just make sure you're kind of monitoring them, I suppose, uh, because they can often make it like just be a replacement. So people will sort of say, like I was reading a recipe earlier and it was like, uh, it was like 200 something grams of dates. So something oh. like a really small dish. And I was like, I don't need that many dates in there. It's gonna be so sugary. Um, so yeah, I think dates are a good option, but within healthy breakfast. Uh, but again, if breakfast isn't your thing, just make the first meal you have of the day as packed full of good stuff as you can. Um, Cause I, I think it's really important. So you don't know, we never know what's gonna happen with our days. We never know where things are gonna go. So if any opportunity you can, if you have access to some good food, then take that opportunity and get it when you can. Uh, prioritize protein, of course, cause it helps to slow the release of sugars into the bloodstream. Swapping refined carbohydrates for unrefined, eating a wonderful colorful rainbow every day. And I don't mean eat lots of Skittles, I mean lots of colourful fruits and veg. Uh, balancing blood sugar levels, mindful eating, and focus on the stress-producing nutrients. So